Welcome to this module on leadership. The famous saying, do unto others what you would like others to do unto you. The basic mantra of how to be a leader. Let us look at leadership early in our lives. So as to say an early discovery of leadership. Early in our lives, say as a young boy or girl, we actually tend to show leadership qualities. How, you may ask? Well, leadership is not about doing big or great things to be branded a leader in the eyes of the society at large. Even a small deed of helping your parents carrying out household work is, I believe, the foundation on which the leadership slowly but steadily grows. What I'm saying is we evolve as leaders over a period of time by actually leading ourselves to do things for others. Well, when this happens over a period of time, the leader in you sprouts out to become a large tree, which we all call leadership. This evolution of a person right from childhood to adulthood actually brings in lots of courage, enthusiasm, vigor, vitality, empathy, compassion, honesty, humility, modesty, and above all the most important, the camaraderie among team members to make him or her effective and efficient leaders to lead themselves and in turn to lead others. So the writing on the wall is very clear, my dear friends. We are leaders to a degree and what needs to be inculcated in us is to move to the next level of leadership is that we have to look into how to shape our destiny and also the destiny of people who in intend to follow you. So that is the mystery of leadership is broken and people understand the nuances of being a good and effective leader by your walking, talking example. And this country of ours is craving for more able and charismatic leaders. The best part is this can happen only when you put your best foot forward to lead yourselves and in turn others. Now that you've realized leadership is well within us right from our childhood, let us analyze what leadership is all about. Well, if I have to say leadership is all about action and definitely not about position, according to Anthony Robbins in his book, How to Awaken the Giant Within, what will you have to say? Well, if you happen to look closer, you will realize that the word action is an ample testimony to the fact that unless a leader leads by example, will people actually follow him or her wholeheartedly? Well, a majority of the present day leaders seldom pay any heed to the quote of Mr. Anthony Robbins. Now, this is when things go haywire for him and his team of followers, who by default and not by design are made to follow him. This is a trend happening in most organizations around the world. The dictum that a leader is one who accepts all the accolades when his team is doing well and pass on all the big bats when it's the other way around is what I believe the downslide of being a leader. Most of us don't understand this crazy phenomenon which actually deflates the morale of individuals and thereby the organization. Look at leaders like Abdul Kalam, Mahendra Singh Dhoni, Nelson Mandela, Mahatma Gandhi. Now what made these people different from you and me? It's simple, friends. They kept their followers in front during celebrations and stood in front during a crisis. This kind of undying support meted out to his or her team is a factor which people at large should learn to inculcate if you want to be branded a true leader. Let us look at the qualities of how to become a good leader. The famous adage, quality begets quantity or quality always cost less, holds good in the context of leadership too. Come with me, let us see how it is. Well, today's effective leaders believe in quality of thoughts, actions and deeds because they lead by example and when this 
does happen, people realize that though it is a tough regimen to follow, the fruits of success are available to which it is here to stay. This practice adopted by the leaders actually communicate a message to the outside world that leadership is all about the quality they can bring forth from within. When this is practiced, there is a sense of euphoria, a kind of halo which people recognize and appreciate to become your followers. Thus, when you show true qualities of a leader, you will definitely beget people who will love to be led by you. Hence, if you want to be a leader par excellence, learn to give quality leadership to your followers, which will in turn push up your net worth as an individual or as a leader so that more and more people would want to be under your tutelage or stewardship. Now you saw the qualities of being a good leader. Let me tell you, if you want to be a good leader, you have to listen well because listening is a part of leadership. Leaders who seldom listen to their followers find themselves being branded as tyrants, dictators, etc. Initially in the short run of leadership, this apathy on the part of leaders not to listen to his or her followers have very less impact on his or her leadership tenure. However, in the long run, this will tantamount to bigger problems for the leaders to a great extent. There is bound to be revolt, non-cooperation, low morale, lack of enthusiasm and motivation among the followers and eventually the leaders are bound to be overthrown or people just move away from such leaders. The best examples being Adolf Hitler, Saddam Hussein, Muhammad Gaddafi. Well, these leaders all led their people without listening to their followers and in turn met their end rather drastically and unceremoniously. So let me ask you at this juncture, do you want to be like these people and lose your net worth and in turn become branded as pathetic leaders? Well, if you don't want to be so, then start listening to your followers with an open and receptive mind. Because it is in their welfare and success thus your leadership tenure rest. Practice bias and you end up being a non-functional leader. As an ordinary human being, we tend to show bias on the basis of language, caste, creed, color, acquaintances, etc. towards people in giving or getting things done for ourselves to an alarming extent. Isn't it, my dear friends? One of the few qualities of a leader is to be a dealer in crisis. Sounds funny, right? Let's look into and see what it means to be a leader who is a dealer in crisis. The word crisis, when written in Chinese language, is denoted by two characters. One character denotes opportunity and the other character denotes danger. Thus, for a man of action, crisis is definitely an opportunity to learn on how to deal with it. He revels in this role as a leader. He never lets the intricacies of any given situation get to his team members. It is here a leader stands out as a human being. It is here his followers actually recognize his or her leadership abilities. In other words, he actually insulates his team from hardships or unpleasant situations, which his team will find difficult to cope with. On the other hand, when there is success under his or her leadership, he will be at the background projecting the team to receive all the accolades. And when there is a crisis, he will be right in front facing it head on and solving it in his own sweet way. Well, once it is over, he will call in his team and explain to them as to what went wrong and how it was solved. You know why he does this? He does this exercise for them to learn because they will become tomorrow's leaders. It looks easy, right? But needs lots of character and discipline to walk the talk as a leader. Well, if you do practice this, you'd be surprised as to how many people will be more than ready to follow you within a short span of time. 
my dear friends. So do you want to know what's the order of the day as regards leadership is? Here it is. Protect your team's interest and they will in turn project your leadership. Well, an effective leader should always be open to change. How many of us are open to change? But if you want to be a leader, and that to an effective leader, please be open to change. A leader who is bold enough to accept change with an open mind will definitely have his way around his team members. For this to happen, he has to have a flexible approach in dealing with situations. He has to be open to suggestions and criticism, even if it is originating from the junior most member of his team. When he has this approach towards his team, his followers will definitely feel wanted and in turn given the best to propel the team to great heights. As a leader, you should realize that change is always constant and should vouch for it on a continual basis. A leader should take the views of his team members while incorporating a change or a decision. Well. When this is practiced by the leader, it only shows the trust and faith he or she has on the team, which in turn will provide the leader with undoubting support to carry out and fulfill the objectives assigned to them. As a leader, you have to be definitely in the effective zone. Now, what is the effective zone? Let us see. As a leader, you have to live life in the effective zone. That's what I've been told. And that is what the mantra, again, is to be for a successful leader. It simply means to live life away from your comfort zone. A person who loves challenges, who doesn't look for perfection, but excellence, who is able to shift his or her focus of attention with ease when the going is tough. A person who is not averse to making errors in judgment. A person who rises like a phoenix from the ashes of defeat or failure. A person who treats every fall as a chance to rise bigger is what I call being in the effective zone. Now ask yourself as a leader, am I in the effective zone or not? According to Zig Ziglar, 97% of the people live in the comfort zone and only a courageous 3% of the people live in the effective zone. So where do you want to see yourself a year from now? The same 97% or in the effective 3%? Well, the choice is yours, definitely yours, my dear friends. Good leaders are also strong communicators. As a leader, you should be approachable to your team members. Let me repeat it. As a leader, you should be approachable to your team members. In other words, be a friend and practice empathy with them. A necessary leaders fail to practice is to become generally interested in people. Now, why am I saying this? Well, when you show interest automatically, they will show interest in you. I'm sure you must have heard of Newton's law in which he said, every action has an equivalent and opposite reaction. Well, this principle also holds good in the context of leadership too. So as a leader, if you smile more often, and definitely you will be reciprocated in the same keel by your followers. They'll accept you as a warm and friendly person. If you have a frown on your face, you will get back a frown on your face. So next time you smile or you want to frown, think of Newton's law. To be an effective or efficient leader, you have to be a friend and definitely a guide to your followers. Let's see how. As a leader, you have to be able to connect with your team members on a continual basis. So the channels of communication should always be open for your followers to voice their opinions and suggestions. Further, as a leader, you should have excellent oratorical skills and abilities which should ignite a great amount of passion among your team members to reach their goals. For him, his team is of utmost importance. He places them ahead of himself in all given situations of life. 
he realizes that without a team, there can be no leadership. So remember this, friends. If you want to excel as a leader, learn to communicate effectively, which will lead you to greater heights in leadership. Through their communication skills, they're able to always maintain a positive environment in which the team members are guided well to bring out their best by displaying mental and emotional stability. An effective leader is one who always maintains a friendly and cordial relationship with his followers. Learn to address your team members by their names, which is surely a way to get closer to them. Finally, be a leader who is friendly and makes his followers feel important and do it sincerely.